Now this part may be a, a bit of a improvisation. I think everyone's with us. Is that? But anyway, we, it gives me great pleasure to introduce some special ladies who will share anecdotes about their time in Stockbridge and with Laurel Hill. This group, I might add, run the gamut from the niece of Miss Mabel Choate, two lovely sisters, the father of whom built the shed at Tanglewood, built the Ted Shawn Theater, as well as many features of Laurel Hill, including our beautiful Goodrich Memorial footbridge and Laura's Tower. And of course, Laurel Hill's own heart and soul, who has worked in our association for almost 40 years. So please take the mic, ladies, one by one, introduce yourselves with your full name, and tell us a quick little anecdote. Celia Begersdorf Kittredge. Having grown up in Stockbridge, Laurel Hill was very much a part of our lives. And I remember coming every Laurel Hill day with my parents when I was no age at all. There's several things I remember, though, about Laurel Hill, starting at the foot by the driveway, sliding down the stones and getting scolded very severely at home for ruining my pants, <laughs> which I'm sure I did. And then I have a picture of during the bicentennial in 1939 of Jarek Treadway and myself, and I think somebody else, standing right up there at the corner in our colonial dresses for the bicentennial, which we hated and couldn't wait back to get in our blue jeans. <laughs> so anyway, Laurel Hill's meant a great deal to me. It's my, you know, just came here as a child always, and, and here it is, and I think what Hillary is doing is wonderful. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, I'm Shirley Franz Miller, and um, our family has been involved with Laurel Hill for many, many years. Uh, my mother uh, and father were both members of Laurel Hill for many years, and my father served as treasurer for 13 years, mm -hmm. uh, from 1927 to 1939. Uh, my mother was chairperson of the seventh district uh, in 1926. I don't know what seventh district was, but uh, that was the year she was married. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, father did an awful lot for this, the town too, as well as the things mentioned before. Uh, he laid the underground uh, lighting system for Main Street so there were no overhead li uh, wires. And he made the Stockbridge Library, the old edition, match the new edition when that was made. And he did a lot of other things around town. But uh, the other thing that uh, I remember, and I'm speaking for my sister now, she couldn't make it up the hill. <laughs> uh, we were both in the uh, bicentennial pageant, as was Cecilia, and uh, we were, mother and uh, uh, my sister and brother and I were dressed as Indians for the pageant. And uh, later, um, my mother made the, the costumes that we were dressed in, and uh, later Peter appeared as a Japanese beetle because it was the, the year that the the Japanese beetles that had invaded the area, and uh, they were brought in to demonstrate that, I guess. And his friend Peter Hyde was also a, a beetle. And uh, our father had made the paper mache beetle that was underneath it. <laughs> And uh, in my years as secretary, I've documented many Laurel Hill Day programs. But what I'm about to read you is from a program 120 years ago. It is hands down my favorite. Mm -hmm. In her book, Memories of a Sculptor's Wife, Mrs. Daniel Chester French gives an entertaining account of a Laurel Hill Day from the early 1900s. It seemed that the sun was shining directly into the faces of the celebrities sitting on the rostrum, <laughs> making them look rather uncomfortable. 
Suddenly, a little old lady in the front row came to the rescue. She rose to her feet, holding aloft a tiny beruffled parasol. She struggled up across the intervening space, tripping over her long skirts in the uneven ascending ground. Arrived at the stone barricade, she held aloft the dainty little emblem of a bygone femininity. Mr. Choate leaned down and accepted it as if he were receiving an honor from a sovereign. He turned it about, admired it, and then he and the bishop, who happened to be next to him, cuddled down under it and smiled pleasantly, like two big happy boys at their friends left out in the sun. Mm -hmm. Then a second little old lady became inspired, toddled up, tripping over her skirts, and presented her little beruffled offering. And then a third. And there they sat, the diplomat and the churchman, the man of letters and a scientist, the politician and the professor, all in a row and all smiling all with little parasols, black and white and fluffy, above their heads. Now, we're all waiting for our keynote speaker, but before I introduce her, I want to take this opportunity to recognize and 